All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Mild Sauce Radio. I'm Jake Krez, and we're here again once at uh, Soundscape Studios with the one and only Greg Landfair. Yo, what's Sticks up, Sticks to some, Greg Landfair to others. Uh, what's going on, man? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Not much. Just chilling. Had a chill day. Um, same old, same old. Same old, you just know? Chicago, same Chicago old, and the holidays. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I had a great Thanksgiving. I'm glad it's over. I was with the fam, which was amazing. But we was, like, turned up for, like, six days in a row. I think I went out. So now I'm back in the, the studio cave. About to go to L.A. and do some uh, some meetings and some work and make some music. Uh, got some music festivals coming up with Chance, who I play drums with. So I'm excited to be back to work for this fourth quarter, close out the year strong. Most definitely. Uh, it's been, like, another wild year. We were just kind of talking off, mm -hmm. off camera before this. Yeah. Um, I've kind of invariably kind of followed you <laughs> the whole time. That, that um, me. But uh, since the Kids These Days years, uh, it's been fun to watch your evolution uh, from, like, working in the band there to Appreciate getting with the social it. experiment to yeah. now uh, going to do a lot of different stuff. Uh -huh. um, you're showing me some new music before this. Tell me a little bit about... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a loaded. That's a lot to go through in one question. But um, yeah, what's the evolution been like for you? Is it fun to kind of look back after a few years and um, uh, kind of see all the years kind of stacking up a little bit? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you're it's still young. Like what? Are you 20, 25? Twenty seven. You're twenty seven now. Yeah. Sure. Now I'm getting old. Time, time's <laughs> flying. Time's flying. But it's been cool, man. Um, like you said, coming from kids these days and growing up in Chicago in the music scene, it's been cool to see just uh, how it's changed and how it's growing and how there's more eyes and more label people just looking at us. Um, so it's been a, a cool journey. Um, starting off um, leaving kids these days to playing with Chance, um, playing with even Frank Ocean before I played with Chance, and SZA after that. Um, so drums has always been a big part of me and my life and what I do. And then during Coloring Book, I started um, producing more and just making um, music and beats and stuff like that. Got my first real placement on that album. Uh, I did mixtape, Chance the Rapper, Young Thug, so Yachty, Yachty. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a few years ago. Yeah, so now I know. I like, I, I, that one like sped by too for me. Like I was talking to Peter Cottontail the other day in mm -hmm. the studio and he was like, we were talking about Coloring Book. It doesn't seem that long ago, but I guess, I guess yeah. it did kind of like Man, yeah, we're coming up on four years ago now. So yeah, those grannies it's been like, a while. got some dust on them already. I'm saying it's time <laughs> to go get some new ones. Absolutely. Time to go get some new ones. But, yeah, I kind of slowly just made that transition around the coloring book days, and that just came natural. I had al always had it in me and just dabbled with it. But I think as time went on and being in the social experiment and seeing all those guys, Nate, Peter, Nico, uh, go from instruments um, on the stage at shows to the studio and, and still um, be very musical and just, you know, be, being able to be in the studio and just be more than just what their instrument was kind of inspired me to do the same thing. Like I said, I was always doing it, but I kind of just started taking it more serious around that time. And, uh, yeah, I made, I made mixtape and from there it's just like i think the love for it grew more just seeing the success of that and what it brought and um yeah you know you mentioned something uh, you mentioned something just now um when you were talking the being more than your instrument mm -hmm. which is interesting it's an interesting statement because i yeah. think when i think of when i think back to those early days like doing stories about you and kids these days um I mean, talking to Nico about being in the back of the van together and like yeah. you know just cooking up uh, stuff on a garage band or whatnot. Exactly. And uh, to see every, I mean, you know, Vic was the front man. He was gonna do. He was always gonna be uh -huh. like a person. But you guys in the background, you know, quote unquote, yeah, have all had such interesting journeys since. I mean, like when you look at Nico and yourself, and you yeah. look at what uh, Macy's done with Seema, exactly. what Wayne Beckstrom's done across the board. Um, Liam Kazar, of course, uh -huh. like has been just a, a revelation on the guitar anytime yeah. he does. Um, and they've all done exactly what you said. I think there's always been that sense of being larger than your instrument or more than your yeah. instrument. Yeah, I mean, that was the coolest thing about kids these days is you had eight different people from eight different musical backgrounds, and they were all just so talented. And um, they all just really loved music more than 
more than you know. And I think it was just natural that once we did split up, um, that everybody kind of went to their own lane and did their own things. Like you said, Lane has amazing solo projects. Obviously, Nico with the Juju and um, Surf and Macy and Seema doing amazing things. And even Liam, uh, I think it was all kind of natural for us. I think we always had it in us. It was just, just doing kids these days so young, we didn't really get a chance to, to, uh, to really just to see what we had inside. It was always, you know, being in a band is like being in a relationship. So it's like, as sometimes you could lose sight of yourself for for your your partners and your partner, and the bigger goal. And I think once we um, broke up, it kind of just gave us time, really. That's the most important thing, time to really focus and see and try new things and see mm -hmm. what we were capable of. And I think we all knew we had it in us, but you don't know until you try. I mean, you were all, what, like, you were all 18, 19 years old at that time? Yeah, we, we mean, started even younger. We started right. around 16, and we probably ended at around 19, 20. I remember going to, uh, I remember going up to, uh, the postdoc farm, like the yeah. night after you guys broke up. I've still to this day have no idea yeah. why I was there. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Seema Cunningham, but yeah. like, Drew me in a van and brought me along. But I was um, actually, I still had the Adidas you gave me. Uh, that Damn, day. I remember <laughs> that. That's crazy. I still got those. But uh, Shout out to Wex, man. I remember, uh, I remember being up there and seeing everybody in that, like it was so interesting to be there in that moment though, uh -huh. uh, sitting around a fire and kind of just like literally watching as you all kind of dealt with yeah that that shock i guess of the last few years um and it, it i always kind of look back to that moment as mm -hmm. like and you kind of mentioned uh you know leaving it as a good thing i mean also being in it like you guys were exposed to so much you know what i mean yeah and we were like you had to see that there were bigger horizons you know at a young age yeah. we were exposed to so much we used to be in high school getting flown out by record labels and stuff and showing up to lunch and limos and all this <laughs> so it was cool to at a very early age just see the industry uh kind of learn it earlier than most and um not sign and still go through like years of making music and grinding to know like what we're worth and what's real and what's fake and yeah it, w it was a hard time breaking up but i think for a lot of us it was it was a good thing because um we just got to see what we were capable of and what we if we really wanted to do music and you know for me i think it was a blessing in disguise at the time i didn't realize it but now i think um i'm a better person and i'm wiser and just know how to move around the industry a little better because of all my time and kids these days yeah i mean i would liken like you know i, I would liken like the time you guys spent and the kids these days almost to like uh like the way luka Doncic got to like play Exactly. Professional basketball when he was exactly. like 15. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. He's like better for it because he got to like see everything. You can't tell him anything now. Yeah. That's why he's killing the game. And 20. to do it with so many people. Like a lot of people are solo artists or it's two or three people in the group, but to have so many different opinions mm -hmm. on certain things was just good to see. Like it's no one way to do music. Um, you know what I'm saying? So just seeing all those different perspectives, like I think that was the biggest thing for me at least. Being in that band just showed me so many different things that I wouldn't have been exposed of because I wouldn't have been in this, you know what I'm saying? What was it, a three, four ride with all these different personalities and different outlooks and different backgrounds and learning so much different music in a short period of time from all these amazing musicians was just uh, really a blessing for me. And I think it's why I, I could move, maneuver and all of us could m maneuver around the way we do now because we've kind of like in a way done everything basically as far as just like music goes not everything obviously but like a lot well, like at a young age yeah, yeah. exactly i mean I, I mean i remember also talking like a uh, thing that always came up was like studio culture and the way you mm -hmm. all kind of took that very seriously it was a very professional atmosphere in the studio exactly and uh it's something like you know nico and everyone i've talked to is always kind of referenced offhand not like mm -hmm. preachy but just like it's something that was obvious yeah um is that something that like you know learning that at a young age learning how to like deal with you know not egos in a bad way everyone mm -hmm. you know egos are a thing when you have a lot of people yeah. in the room so uh with making music it's even tenfold on that yeah. when you like took that and all those experiences now take that into the studio and working with artists now producing music you mm -hmm. know making music over the years that you have in the studio um how did that help you especially when like 
you know, working with other people like Sia, like Frank Ocean, being able yeah. to kind of be flexible. Um, tremendously, man. We were so young making our first records uh, and just learning from the different producers we worked with and from each other. Uh, my dad helped us with the first record and it was just cool to just learn the basics, learn studio etiquette, learn um, just how to be in the studio. And then I think really what was the breakthrough for us was uh, the project Trap House Rock. We mm -hmm. got a chance to work with um, Jeff Tweedy from Wilco. And that was just so eye opening for I think all of us. We really got to see that like you can literally do anything in the studio, anything is possible. But also at the same time knowing whatever you do and the end goal should always be for what's best for the music. And like you said, throwing those egos out the window, it was tough at times, but I think Jeff really was the, uh, the person who, who, um, who uh, orchestrated the breakthrough for us as far as that goes. Like we were doing so much crazy stuff. Like we were using, I mean, it doesn't seem crazy now, because I think everybody kind of does a lot of different crazy things with music, but like we were putting snare drums in showers, we were recording horns in uh, long stair hallways, we were using plungers for things. Like it was just like we were slowing like stuff. Sound effect. Uh, it was crazy. Like just seeing, like and especially back then and being a live band at that point, it was uh, at least in our heads at the time like a stigma to like use it, overuse the computer or overuse technology and music. But working with Jeff, he really like just gave no fucks. Like he would. Well, most up. people would put him as like the folk, you know, I'm saying acoustic god, right? Yeah. He is, man. Like him in the studio, like he's one of the best producers that I've ever worked with. And just seeing that now lets me know, like, one, anything is possible. Two, if it sounds good, it works. You don't got to be too technical with stuff. And three, just like always do it for the love of the music and for the for the music to be as best as it can be. And nothing else really matters outside of that so how was that translated as far as like uh creating music for your, yourself and now kind of transitioning out of like a band aspect it's been cool like um now i'm kind of doing like this artist thing a little bit and producing mainly i've been producing lately more than i've been playing drums so uh i take that same mentality when i'm working with artists or when i'm working on my production like you know uh i don't let myself be in any type of box. I just create what I feel and I just go off the energy of what I'm feeling at the moment and you know, anything is possible. I'm never scared to try something or to try to be different or to, you know what I'm saying? As long as the outcome is is uh, is good, I think that's that's what matters most. Uh, you mentioned like, you mentioned like finding sound in different ways mm -hmm. and I think if you track pictures of you and your drum set over the years you can kind of see that evolution a bit like yeah you went from like a pretty basic set and then yeah. like over the years now you got the spiral going you got all this crazy stuff yeah. like what's that been like kind of exploring different sounds and finding different ways to like achieve what you're going for uh it's been super cool i still try to do what calls for the music so like although i do have a bigger kit now i think everything is used for a certain a certain song or a certain mm -hmm. feel or a certain time in the shows that I play and it still varies like I use a bigger setup for chance because uh, we do longer sets and uh, there's a lot of different styles from old school hip hop to the gospel feel to the you know trap hip hop feel um, so although the kid is big and it looks like a lot of stuff it's like everything I actually do use it's oh yeah I think that, that. I, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying but um it's still just all experiment for me and all just trying new things and you know i'm a big on feeling so whatever i feel at the moment is is what i'm going to play what i'm going to use i still use like smaller setups if i'm playing with like a scissor i'll use a more basic maybe like a, a rock type of setup and that something in that lane mm -hmm. um but yeah that's that's that so where do you uh how do you feel like uh where you're at right now i mean uh like we kind of started off by talking about the fact that this mm -hmm. is like another chapter in a yeah. long book f for your musical career so far. Um, what's what's like some memories you have from the la from like the last few years that leading up to now that have really like stood out as like do you have the, do you have like moments throughout? I know some people do, some people don't. But do you have like yeah. moments back on you like 
damn that was crazy like that was really like that was that was a moment i probably should uh definitely uh it's 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 like i feel like it's just starting still for me yeah, personally definitely. so i feel like it's like literally just the beginning like mm -hmm. i haven't even you know what i'm saying broke through yet all the way i really feel like 2020 is going to be like the beginning for me as far as uh being a producer and creeping into being an artist but really my production i think is going to shine out in 2020 and then um there's been so many great moments man we've like I know been it's able like to, a lot to go over, I'm sure. like i'm so blessed and thankful like we've been able to literally travel the world and back um but i think for me the first stage was obviously the first like okay now we're on a tour bus that first tour is always going to be the best mm -hmm. so for upcoming musicians or rappers singers whatever really cherish that first one because it doesn't really get better than that that first one is always the one so for us that was 2013 the social experiment tour we have so many crazy memories on that and just like you know for the first time like i'm saying being on a bus and just driving around the whole country and then from 2014 to flying around the, the whole uh um the world basically going to australia going to um europe and and all that stuff was pretty cool and then obviously it was the coloring book era which was super cool that was like um when like i feel like everybody knew like okay chance the rapper is a star and just being in a social experiment and being able to witness and be a part of all his musical moments was amazing that whole time period of leading up to coloring book and right after hanging out with so many different amazing musicians like yeah. meeting all your idols and, and being in sessions with Lil Wayne and seeing Drake at music festivals and going backstage. Like you throw for, your hands up like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like after that started happening frequently, it kind of was like, okay, now we've arrived and then Coloring Book came out and obviously the Grammys was a big thing. I think the Grammys for me was the moment that I cherish and try to remember the most but it was such a blur and it was so much fun our family was out there <laughs> i know it was i don't like, remember much from that weekend either. i don't <laughs> I like i don't even remember time. i have like five good memories from that night and i don't time. even really remember like playing the grammys like i literally <laughs> walked off stage the second i walked off stage and was like like i just blacked out like i know i didn't fuck up and i know I played the song the way it was supposed to be played, but like I don't remember that shit. Like it was such a crazy oh, I moment. Imagine, like from that point of view, of course. It was that, so crazy, yo. Like that, I just like uh, the Grammy weekend, that being like a fly on the wall for a little bit of it. It was just so cool to see like people we'd seen around, like you'd mm -hmm. see here at Soundscape or you'd see around the city, like mm -hmm. talking to Quincy Jones. And, like, I'm saying, yo. You know what I mean? It was just like I'm such saying, a surreal moment it was in that crazy. time. It was so cool for that reason. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was the, the entire <laughs> Chicago flew to L.A. It was like, actually not so many people. Were there. I'm like, gee, like y'all just like all the homies was there. It was amazing, but it was like, damn, how'd you get into this party, bro? Like, I only see you at random bars in Chicago, and now you're at this crazy ass Grammy party. Like, it was so cool to just see Chicago as a whole out there. I feel like Chicago won those Grammys together. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> I was like, I remember looking around with like Migos on stage and like, like Chan, yeah. it was just like, and it was just like all the celebrities you see everywhere, but then like everyone from Chicago in the middle dancing. It I'm was saying. Like the weirdest, yeah, I'll always remember that. It was, it's like, it was like a Chicago party mixed with like the industry and I was like, oh, cool. It's like people who had to be at that party type thing. Yeah, exactly. that was crazy. But um, so like moving forward, what's, I mean, what you got, the production coming out this year so mm -hmm. how how long be until we hear you uh your voice on record for regular well i got gucci polo yeah. out so please go check but that I'm like uh when we get um, like a steady we still don't have a name we're still working on sticks i mean it? i'm going by sticks for now if if some co else comes to me i've thought about changing it to something else that i don't really want to reveal but um i think i'm gonna drop a song if not before Christmas, right after sometime around when we go on tour, before tour. I haven't figured that out yet, but I got I got at least like 15 to 20 joints just like in the vault. I was gonna drop a project with Gucci Polo, um, but I low key put the, the video, I put a video up of me, like nobody knew I was rapping for real. Uh, and I put a video up while I was working on this little project I was working on. 
and it just kind of went crazy for my friends and just my followers and uh, I got like hella comments like yo what the fuck is this what song is this and then when I told everybody it was me everybody was like wait what so I kind of like tricked myself into releasing the Gucci polo shit and then right after that I was gonna follow up with like a little EP probably like five to ten songs but then once Gucci polo came out I realized like although people like this it's like people still don't know like I'm an artist like Gucci polo did cool but like it's obviously millions and millions of people that never heard it so I kind of want to take it slow on the artist shit and more still focus on my producing stuff because I want to you know really try to master things and not just like move on quickly I still mm -hmm. feel like I got a lot to do as far as production goes um, are you working with any anyone in particular on that or is it mostly for yourself um I got homies I work with you know other producer friends and obviously social experiment people I work with chance all the time um but I'm still like just getting my my catalog together and really still just like sharpening sharpening my tools mm -hmm. as far as that go. But uh, I'm working on some stuff. I'm taking some meetings, just trying to find my team, um, the right team for me to work with as far as production goes and my artist stuff. But at the same time, just, you know, staying focused and working. I'm not trying to really rush, rush it. Um, but like I said, I'm probably gonna drop one song, and I kind of want to like do the like drop a few songs, let people kind of get to know me, yeah, yeah. let people like you know let it marinate, let them know that I I do rap and I do sing and I do this. So I want to kind of build a natural fan base before I just drop a few songs on yeah. people's head and they they listen to it and they're like, all right, that's cool, but next, you know. <laughs> so I kind of want to do that gradual that gradual growth as far as that goes so i'll probably drop i say a song every few months and then i i think i'm i'm gonna try to drop a project for sure during the summer okay summer 2020 my, not a bad time yeah exactly because my, my my project that i was working on was a summer vibe so i kind of i missed the summer on it just with the big day coming out and working on that and all that stuff and it's a good reason to do too yeah <laughs> yep so that's that and then as far as production like i said i'm still just trying to get in my groove, trying to find my lane, um, and then build my team up. Um, so yeah, that's that. So who's the better rapper, uh, you or Reese? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Reese, friendly Reese is friendly competition. Been putting those songs out for Reese it. is amazing. He he's got a lot his, of dope songs. Exactly what you just said though. He's been doing that for about the last year and a half, like slowly leaking it out, and building the fan base, getting those videos out. Yep. But yeah, uh, man. another we, another we one. We were low key supposed to drop like we were t we we're not supposed to but we were talking about dropping our projects on the same day but like i said when i put out my first song it did well but it didn't obviously go crazy as fuck so i was like i'm gonna just take my time and drop song by song and let people really get to know me before i just drop like yeah. 10 songs on their head you know what i'm saying i'm gonna try to do the gradual thing but shout out Reese Money. We got to do that feature. Reese has been talking about getting on the show for a while. We keep going back and forth. So True. this is just a challenge to Reese. Greg got on the week. Slide. <laughs> Slide, Nim. <laughs> uh, we don't want to keep you too much longer, but uh, what do you want to leave the people with? Like uh, going into the new year, we're last month of man, the decade. Just look out for it's the been a crazy new music. decade for you. Yeah, it's been crazy, man. Uh, but it's about to get even crazier. We're about to go on tour. So. If I'm in your city, hit me up. I love to do some sessions or just hang out, go to the studio, go to the club. I'm a nice, fun guy. Uh, follow me on the on the socials, at Sticks Jams, to keep up with me. Come to my jam night. I was going to say, do we have a jam night coming up? Uh, nope, one just passed, but you can always fo just follow me on Instagram. I post that shit frequently. That's, like, all I really post about, my music and jam night. So, uh, at Sticks Jams, that's S T I X J A M S. I'm sticksjam.com, S T I X J A M.com, no S on the website. But yeah, expect a lot of new music in 2020. Uh, whether that's me playing drums on the road, me releasing rap, rap music, singing music, or me producing for your favorite artists. Um, Doing it all. Yeah, I'm trying to do it all, man. I'm trying to do it all. I might be DJing and shit. If I get a few records out here on the radio, you can catch me DJing some parties and stuff. Just follow up, man. You know, some caters. Uh, right, <laughs> <bartends>. man. <laughs> I'm thinking about going to the league. I'm going to try out for the Bulls. Probably make the Bears right now. I probably, probably could. Probably make the Bulls, too. Okay, I probably, man, bro. They need anybody right I now. I could bro. definitely make the Bulls. They ass. 
But that's I love I love the Bears though. I love the Bears. Shout out to the Bears. Cause six and six. All right. But I mean, this season was a disappointment for sure. But I'm diehard, so I'm riding with y'all, man. Yeah. Well, Eddie was on our last show. He already he jumped ship for the Ravens already. I fuck with the Ravens, especially yeah. they got a black QB. The Bears snoozed. Y'all should have got Deshaun. We we. I mean, you couldn't really foresee Pat Mahomes. The Chiefs did, so I guess you could have. But goddamn, bro. Trubisky. Goddamn. Yeah, well, with that, <laughs> we out of here. We out of here, man. It's been Greg Landfair and Miles House Radio. As always, I'm your host Jake Krez, and we'll be back again soon. Thanks for yes, watching. Yes, sir. Miles House. Miles House.